Hello, good morning. You're welcome to the sports segment here on New Day. My name is Yao Ofusulabi. Now, um, we're still continuing our coverage of the Ghana Football Association presidential elections, and that's coming up on the 25th of October. And we're still continuing uh, the interviews with the presidential aspirants here uh, on New Day and also on TV3 and on 3FM 92.7. This morning, joining me in the studio is Nanayao Amponsa, who's an astute agent and owner of Far Rangers Football Club. Nana, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. This morning. Now, let's just um, uh, begin. I, I mean, it, it, it must be um, tough on you over the past few days, looking at the processes that you've gone through up until now. Uh, good morning to your viewers. Uh, it's not been tough. Uh, I've been up for the challenge for over two years now, right. since I released my manifesto. Right. And I've been going around the delegates, going around the clubs, uh, sharing my vision because I believe that when you sleep and you dream, only you know what you saw in your dream. But yeah. once you're able to articulate that dream very well, you get people to back that dream. So that's what I've been doing for the past two years. And for me, it's business as usual. Sharing my vision with the people who matter, uh, the club owners, the club administrators, and trying to explain to them how we can practically make their business economically viable. So I've been on the road and uh, it's been a great experience. I believe that uh, those I've met so far, about 90% of the delegates, they are angry enough for a change. So that's my motivation for being on the road. Now, now, uh, now, now the, the vetting process was, um, the, the, the other candidates that I've spoken to say it was strenuous. How was it for you? And, and also, um, was there a bit of fear that you know you might be disqualified at some point? No, no fear at all, and it was a great experience for me, a great learning experience for myself and the panel. Uh, it was a great engagement. Uh, at the end of the day, they said they learned a lot from me, and I equally learned something from them. So for me, it was more of a dialogue to ascertain how ready I am for the job, right. how competent I am, and how committed I am to the vision of moving Ghana football to the next level. Well, now your, your manifesto is right in front of me, but before we, we delve into uh, issues of the manifesto, let's just look at your plan. What, what, what plan do you have to reform Ghana football? Because you've particularly spoken about restoring uh, the image of the Football Association and also having to, uh, a lot to do with branding and, and everything about the association. What's the plan? My plan uh, has three cardinal points. Right. First, uh, restoring the integrity of the sport to be able to attract all and sundry uh, corporate Ghana, uh, corporate world into it. The second thing is to develop the foundation of our football, which is grassroots football, on which we will build uh, the commercial entity of the league that's commercializing our leagues, on which, uh, which forms uh, the economic uh, fulcrum of the uh, our football economy, right. then we can build a superstructure of black stars on yeah. that. So those are the three cardinal points of mine. How do you intend to um, work on that foundation of football that, that you've just spoken, the second point? It's, it's a point that many people feel that it's, it's no more in our football and so our football is dying. Do you believe Colts football, it's, uh, the, the death of Colts football is it's having an effect on our football structure generally? And how are you looking Col to... Colts football to is not dead, but it's, it's suffering and we need to resuscitate it. Uh, when we say coach football vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, academy football, the difference is simple. Right. Academy is the boarding school, coach is a day school. But what do these coach clubs need? Basically, pitches. I have said that the players who come to play at coach level, uh, second division, third division, fourth division, they do not ask for salaries, they do not ask for a place to put their head or even food to eat. All they require is good pitches and equipment. So I, as an FA president, I'm going to prioritize our funding in terms of acquiring equipment to go around the regions constructing pitches. When I went to a crappy Mampo, I constructed a pitch for $25,000, right. con converting it from grassless pitch into a well-grassed fence pitch for $25,000. Grassed? Yes, it's, it's in my manifesto. Right. You can right. see it yeah. here. Okay. Many, many will say $25,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. But we were in this country, and, and no disrespect to anybody, we went to Brazil World Cup. Mm -hmm. The officials who went, nobody paid for his flight ticket, mm -hmm. hotel accommodation, food per diem, right. mic ticket, mm -hmm. local transportation, yeah. and they were rewarded with $100,000 each. Exactly. We could have easily said, Yaw Pon Satans for coming to Brazil for three weeks. This is $25,000 for you. Let's use the remaining $75,000 to construct three pitches, grass pitches, 
for these kids who did not also go to Brazil to benefit from. I have said that even though FIFA says that we are, they are against undue interference in our game, they also call for cooperation between the association and government. That's why there is a standard cooperation agreement. We need to liaise and align our developmental agenda with government so that we can assess some funds from, for instance, the District Assembly Common Fund. Right. There is a sports element in there in which there is a football component. Right. There is, uh, in terms of the MPs Common Fund, there is a sports element in there in which there is a, a football component. If we are able to make a presentation to the Parliamentary Select Committee on Youth, Sports and Culture and show them our blueprint, I'm sure we can collaborate to develop infrastructure at the grassroots level. Right. I've also said I'm going to institute a, a department that is going to be chasing training compensation. Because right. FIFA says that once you train a club at the, a player at that level, and the player signs a first professional contract, right. there is a development fee that is supposed to come. If right. it's on claim, a lot of the clubs do not know. So you need a department that will help them chase that. Right. It also, the FIFA also says that, if those fees are unclaimed within two years, that amount comes to the Federation for Juvenile Football Development. Right. In the last 20 years, how much of that amount has come into the FA and how have we appropriated those funds to the development of football? Right. We also need to link the football at that level to education. That is why I've said I'm going to establish 16 regional academies. We're not going to put up any new buildings. In, in every region? In every region. We're not going to put up any new buildings. There are various SHS across the regions. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if we pick central region, we can say in first game school is going to be the base for the, re the region, uh, regional football academy for this particular year. Mm -hmm. We select players at the GHS level when they play their inter-schools, and we house them in front of them. They have the accommodation, they have the classrooms. All we need is to develop, develop their pitch, like we did during Camp 2008 for Achimota and Prince where people were play, playing. And then we need to develop the human resource at that level. Right. A lot of players remain in this country. They do not get the opportunity to travel abroad and play professionally like others do. Right. So when you say these people need to pay for their own coaching courses, it's very expensive for them. Right. The FA must subsidize to train developmental coaches at that level, and we can, if we can put all this together, we're going to have a very good uh, grassroots system. No, no, no. On, on uh, page six of your manifesto, it says football as a social enterprise, and the first point says collaborate with the Ministry of Gender and Women's Affairs to get young girls and boys off the streets through interventions, and also run documentaries to educate families on the potential of football to change their circumstances and that of their communities and the need to support their children, especially girls. Uh, when they desire to play. So um, there's an inclusion of, of women in your administration. Definitely. You realize that when it comes to women's football, it is going through a phase where male football was once a time, where if you go to play, they call you kubola and all manner of things. The females are going through that and they shouldn't because we have been through that and we should have made sure that they don't go through that. Right. However, that's what is happening. So we need to educate families. That even if your child is in the university and she wants to play, it's not a bad profession. However, we have to ensure that we develop the sport at that level. And I have said that we need to incentivize male clubs to adopt female clubs. For instance, if House of Folk is going to play a game and 20,000 people are going to watch and they have a female side, at least you get 5,000 to watch a curtain razor. Right. But that way you whip up enthusiasm. Look at our sisters who do this career job. Mm -hmm. Look at the strength they exhibit. Yeah. If we're able to catch them young and teach them to play football, they can make decent professions for themselves. Right. But we cannot do this alone. That is why the FA must open up. We shouldn't operate as a closed circuit association mm -hmm. where we do not allow any other uh, person to come into it. We need to liaise with other departments and agencies to be able to develop because the football is only a subset of the entire economy of Ghana. Now, Nana, in, in an era where uh, women are opting for equal pay in football. Recently, USA's veteran goalkeeper Hope Solo came out to say that the women need to be paid as much as the men are paid. Is that something you're believing and are you going to push that if you become president? It's a controversial topic, but uh, in my economy, days, uh, in terms of wage differentials, talent is unquantifiable. Right. Even within the male sport, in a particular team, say Real Madrid, all players don't take equal pay. Right. So for me, it should be according to the person's talent. If the woman is better than the man, pay the woman more. Right. It's as simple as that. And so, 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 so in, in, this, in this instance, if the captain of the Black Queens, in your opinion, 
plays better than the captain of the Black Stars. She earns more than him. If we, as I have said, I'm going to set up a department to market the women's game, a department to run the women's game. Right. If more sponsorship is coming to the women's game, mm -hmm. like there are fans that come from FIFA. Yeah. If, for instance, FIFA is sending $2 million to the women's game, make sure you stay, you keep it in the women's game. Yeah. If that means that the women are going to get more than the men, let them get it. Don't say that, oh, I'm going to put 1.5 into a male's game, even though it came through the women's section. For right. me, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ensure that we push the women. Listen. If you are in a house with your wife mm -hmm. and you have two cars, yeah. one is old, one is new, mm -hmm. you give the new to your wife and you use the old. <laughs> How come we cannot do the same to our women? Yeah. You see the women play on grassless pitches while the men play on good pitches. Yeah. That cannot be right. right. We pamper our wives, we pamper our sisters, our mothers, our girlfriends, our daughters. When it, daughters. But when it comes to women's football, mm -hmm. we feel that we should not take good care of them. Right. That cannot be right. Yeah. No, no, you are you are an agent, and so I was. You were you were an agent, right? You were an agent, and 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 so players are central to what you do, and you have a club also, uh, Far Rangers. So players are central to what you do. Now, what do you make of the standard of living that the local players go to, and what can we do to improve their systems, wage structure, their injuries, and 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 those things? It's appalling, but you see, you cannot build a heaven within a hell. Kotoko cannot decide that they are going to pay players $5,000 when the entire football economy is struggling. One of the reasons why players are not paid well in this country is also because of the structure of the contracts. I have said that I'm going to institute an FA standard contract. There is this mythical idea of sign-on fees, which is burdensome to the clubs and also creating problems for the players. A player playing in Ghana, let's say, Kotoko decides to sign a player and they say, you're going to get 500 uh, CDs a month, and we are giving you a sign-on fee of 30,000 cities. Right. That comes to $7,200. Mm -hmm. The player takes the 30,000, he buys a new car, and the 500 cities cannot sustain the car. Right. So he's unable to play. The same player will abandon that amount, go to Ethiopia for $500 a month, which mm -hmm. comes to $6,000 at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Why is this so? It is important that we structure the contracts such that the clubs are not overburdened right. and the players are also not put in a certain corner right. because if a club like house of food decides to sign five players mm -hmm. give them sign on fee of thirty thousand each that comes to uh, one hundred fifty thousand yeah. if they are paying transfer fee of thirty thousand that's another one hundred and fifty thousand three hundred thousand yeah. up front yeah. how are they going to be able to pay other players mm -hmm. so it's important that we structure the contract because when you go abroad there's nothing like sign on fee right. if your salary is thousand cities a month it's calculated over the 12 months right. if the agent is able to negotiate and a salary advance for you, mm -hmm. then you get maybe two months salary advance and the rest is paid. Right. These players have brothers and sisters who have finished the completed university and say, come to TV3. Right. And if it comes to TV3 and your salary is 1000 it's 1000 yeah. So if your brother comes to you and says, House of Work wants to sign, they give me 1000 series a month. You're going to allow, you're going to advise them to sign. Yeah. However, we must streamline the law such that if House of Folks says 1,000 series a month, it goes to the player. If right. you do not pay the player for three months, he's a free player. He can join any club of his choice and you are still going to pay the money. Exactly. So we need to streamline our laws to protect both parties. Right. Now, Nana, let's come to the Black Stars. It is one of the major things that we have in this country. Um, I mean, the, the, the same question applies to uh, the, the players one, the, the, the one on, on, the, on the local players. And the, the wage structure and, and, and how we resource um, the, the players. Now, the Black Stars, many people have said that they take too much money and, and they do not produce that what we want. And that's why there's a level of apathy and support for the Black Stars and all of that. What do you, what do you make of this and, and how are you looking to change that if there's anything to change? Again, is the const, uh, contract structure and how we negotiate with the Black Stars. So contract with the players? Exactly. Right. These players, some of them play in professional clubs abroad. Mm -hmm. And in terms of bonus structure, there are many clubs that you go, you do not get your bonus, 100% of your bonus. Say, if you win a match, you get, say, 50% of the bonus. And then at the end of the season, if you are not relegated, for instance, yeah. you get the remaining 50%. Right. In other clubs, when you place, say, top four, you get another set of the bonus. So it is important because I don't see why it is not motivational. It's not like, okay, you are going to play a tournament in Egypt. Mm -hmm. First three matches, yeah. no bonus until you call when you qualify, you get fifty thousand right. dollars. By then, you know that they've achieved something. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think that we are also treating the national team as a buying and selling business. Right. When we've just come from Afcon, and instead of doing a proper postmortem of why we failed to win a trophy, people just are fixated on the budget. We have spent about 150 million dollars in this country before. 
for AFCON 2008. Mm -hmm. We constructed over four uh, stadia pitches, not because we wanted those facilities, mm -hmm. because we wanted to host to give us an advantage to win. Yeah. At the end of the day, we didn't win. Right. But when we went to Brazil, uh, sorry, uh, South Africa World Cup, yeah. the mileage we got as a country, mm -hmm. the goodwill every Ghanaian felt mm -hmm. cannot be quantified. Right. Rwanda are advertising on Arsenal K ten million dollars a year mm -hmm. versus Rwanda. Yeah. So going to tournament is not just about winning, it's about participation. But the sad part is that we went to Egypt with six million dollars. We didn't win anything. Yeah. We brought about one point seven back and we've put it into an account. Mm -hmm. Instead of using it to develop grassroots football for those kids to develop to come and win us something. Right. In twenty ten the players who were ten years old, sorry, 20, 10 years old, mm -hmm. now they are nineteen years old. Exactly. So if we did not we did not invest in their future, mm -hmm. how are they going to perform for us? The, 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 there's, a, there's a section in your manifesto that says propose uh, projects uh, construct an ultra modern national teams training center to serve as training base for all national teams to establish an ultra modern sports medical center and also one league center one ambulance policy uh, through effective fixture, uh, fixture scheduling and also to establish a football museum to preserve our rich football culture and history where's the money going to come from how much have we spent on blasters camping in various hotels over the last 10 years government money yeah so if we can spend money on private establishments mm -hmm. to the tune of maybe 10 million dollars yeah. why can't we put that money into our own facility if you go to serbia they have a national team training base they constructed for 12 million euros right. some money from uefa some money from prize money in tournaments they performed in mm -hmm. and it's not only there for the national teams it's a four-star hotel with pitches right. so outsiders come and um, you know, stay there and pay money. It yeah. generates revenue as well. Exactly. In terms of uh, the, in the science, uh, the medical center mm -hmm. that I'm going to establish within the system, if a player is going to the national team now, under 70, under 20, mm -hmm. the player is asked to go and do an MRI scan. Right. They go to 37 and pay 1,000 Ghana cities for it. Right. Why can't the FA acquire equipment to set up an orthopedic center there mm -hmm. to take care of our players, right. subsidize their costs? Outsiders will come and pay money to go in there so when i right. said one ambulance one league center everybody <laughs> thought oh it's crazy he's going to buy 64 ambulances yeah it's simple for a scheduling yeah if we have one ambulance in accra mm -hmm. and olympics is playing on friday can't right. the ambulance be there it can be there if interlife is playing at Elwak on saturday can't the ambulance be there, can be there. if house is playing on sunday at cross can't the ambulance be there right. if liberty is playing at Karindov on a, a monday can't the ambulance be there so it's about fisher scheduling right making use of our scarce resources mm -hmm. to be able to meet our demands right nana um i mean uh, we are just uh, about to wind up the uh, interview now but let's just look at your um the the, the other candidates that, that you are competing with i mean georgia free has gotten massive support from the premier league teams i mean does that strike a bit of fear in you that uh, you know no, it might no, not go well not for at you at all there is a reason it's called secret ballot <laughs> right you can coerce people cajole people to prove their loyalty to you mm -hmm. openly but at the end of the day it's a secret ballot yeah i am more interested in continuously convincing the delegates right and i am 100 percent convinced that more than 50 percent plus one of the delegates are angry enough for a change yeah. i was expecting that my competitors would be campaigning on their achievements yeah. they've had over 13 years mm -hmm. in the setup of the national uh, the fa, FA yeah. being some of them being vice president some being blaster management committee chairman mm -hmm. some have worked with boots and books etc etc uh, exactly. and i was expecting that at this point they were going to campaign on their achievement yeah. when i brought my manifesto two years ago these same aspirants went around saying that you do not win bfa <laughs> elections with manifesto you do not run ghana football with a manifesto today they are launching manifestos amazed fan fairs <laughs> and pageantry <laughs> Glory be to God that they've come to understand that you need to put down a strategic document to work with. Right. Ben Kofi's five-year development plan is what took us to finals of under 20 World Cup, right. 2001. Yeah. The core of that team, Sole Muntari, Mike Lysian, Adukwe Papo, John Mensah, John Pinsil, and uh, Razak Pimpon, and the Rebwati and the rest. Mm -hmm. They were the same core that took us to Mali 2002 quarterfinals. Right. The same core that took us to our very last qualification or the very last participation in Olympic Games in Athens. Right. The same core qualified us to our very first World Cup, AFCON 2008 year, right. until we won under 20 World Cup and another emerging core joined them to AFCON finals in Angola and World Cup 2010. It's the depletion of that squad and the diminishing returns, the lack of succession plan that led to our fiasco in Brazil and our inability to qualify for Russia. So if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. 
Nana, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Well, so that's uh, Nana Yamponsa there, one of uh, GFA's presidential aspirants and also the owner of Far Rangers Football Club uh, there, uh, you know, joining me this, uh, this morning here on New Day. Uh, 